Hello, my name is Rob Hirschfeld. I'm CEO and co-founder of RackN, and also the co-founder of Digital Rebar, uh, and the latest iteration, which we call Digital Rebar Provision, which is an open foundational automation for building data centers from the physical layer up. Uh, I'm gonna give you a video so you can watch me, makes things a little bit more interesting as I talk, uh, and then we'll go through the slides. Uh, hopefully I don't obscure too much with my uh, video picture. If you're interested in more details, uh, rebar.digital is the project homepage, uh, and I have links and all sorts of information coming. Sometimes uh, I also call it just rebar, or DRP, uh, which is what we call the project internally. And so um, from here, let me give you a little bit of background and statistics um, on the project. The DRP is an open source project. Uh, it's mostly written in Golang. It's APL v2 licensed. Um, it uses Golang templates extensively for the content components. Um, it's very active on GitHub. It's been going for quite some time. And we've been building up stars and users, and it's got a healthy community. Um, although it is a single vendor project, so RackN uh, dominates uh, by a long shot the uh, contributions, especially in the Golang code part, uh, where we don't see a lot of um, need for you know a lot of contributions and people pulling into different places. The extension points are intentionally designed so that people can map it into their use cases through content or plugins, and that's where we see people uh, making changes and, and doing contributions back into the community. Uh, it is two years old. It's well into the stabilization phase. If you look at the code development we're doing, it's mostly to add advanced features uh, or, or fix bugs. Um, we're not you know, in big feature development phase with the core project at this point. Most everything we do, do as RackN is happening in plugins um, and other places where we can extend the system. It, there's a lot of extensibility points built into it. Um, this is a fourth generation of this project dating back 10 years to the original Crowbar project. Um, none of the code is, is shared in any way, um, but the team has been working on this problem for 10 years. Uh, and as I said, it's a single vendor project. Um, what I don't want to do is assume that you understand what provisioning is, uh, so we're going to walk through that. Um, the word provisioning comes from preparing for a journey in data centers. It's about operationalizing equipment, not just installing the operating system, as a lot of people think, um, but the actual full operational piece. Rebar. Um, is an homage uh, to a couple things, but most prominently to the structural steel used to build a foundation. Uh, very important for building resilient foundations. Um, and what I want to really focus on is that the physical underlay of a system and automating that is data center plumbing, which sounds very mundane and boring, uh, but if you think about it, something as simple as a jet engine, which is just heating and compressing heating air, is very complex to make it work reliably and at scale. Uh, and so I like this picture because jet engines have a lot of plumbing. We just don't usually see it because their actual function when they're working correctly is so simple and reliable. And that is a lot of what Digital Rebar is, is building is the, the plumbing that makes a data center reliable and simple to operate. Provisioning itself is much more complex than most people think. Uh, it's a multi-step process that interacts with multiple pro protocols through multiple boot cycles. So even the simplest uh, memory boot of a system is going to involve interacting with DHCP, TFTP, HTTP, HTTPS, um, and through different protocols, different scripts, different management, and different depending on the architecture of the system you're using, uh, Intel versus ARM versus anything else, Apple, it could be you know, very different files protocol sequencing and things like that. Uh, and contrary to popular belief, out-of-band management is not required for this process. Um, you do not need IPMI control to patch firmware or anything else. It's helpful, it's important, but it's not required. And that's an important part as we talk about how our abstractions are built and how things work. Um, but it's important to look at this and say provisioning is, is actually much harder than people realize. Uh, and it's hard because of hardware. Uh, which has incredibly snowflaked and variant. Uh, there's, a, there's two types of BIOS. Uh, the new one, UEFI or UFI, um, is has a lot of bugs and variations and is, is different by vendor um, or by generation. And there is no consistent uh, pattern. Uh, there's a lot of similarities, but the things are, are different. And so to make something that works, you have to be able to walk into a data center and understand that, that hardware networking topologies boot sequences, um, requirements are all different. Uh, and what we do 
And what makes digital rebar really distinctive is that we look at this thing as a workflow system. Uh, and so that means that we have a, a platform that allows us to go through this process in a very reliable, very fast, very controlled system. So you can go from DHCP to Pixie to iPixie to kickstarting to doing an inventory and discover process to doing a cloud init and then doing some configuration. These are all very different actions, but they're all required to be done in, in the correct sequence to do provisioning. And then even more importantly, to reprovision gear. Because what we're talking about is cloud behavior here, which is not setting up a machine and walking away, but actually creating something that you can dynamically provision over and over again, deprovision, recover. Um, that's the expectation from cloud native applications, and that's that's literally what we build to. Uh, and so from that perspective, there's a lot of pieces and parts uh, to think about, but it, it's hard. Uh, and it's a lot harder than people appreciate uh, because you have to deal with all these different variations. Uh, some gear might need to skip the Pixie step altogether, or you might not allow um, unsecured protocols, or you might not be able to control DHCP in an environment like a cloud environment. Uh, you might have to jump straight into iPixie. And those are normal, those are normal interactions. And what we've built with Digital Rebar does not require every one of these steps. As a matter of fact, any one of these steps could be skipped and the system will still work. Uh, we actually can work in Google and Amazon where we're given a machine and we just connect to it. Uh, that is fine. Uh, this, that's part of the resilience of the platform that allows us to operate here. When we talk about how the system works, um, there are multiple protocols to consider. Uh, the basics I've already talked about, DHCP, where it's uh, the most basic part of IP uh, management provisioning, which uses multiple protocols. And then the system itself has an API, which is a HTTPS only API. It's RESTful, uh, uses patch and web sockets and things like that. I'll talk about those things. Um, but the system itself, Digital Rebar Provision Service, uh, what we often call an endpoint internally, um, is a self-contained system. It implements all the required protocols. It maintains system state. Uh, this is a ongoing service. It's not a client tool where you maintain a file. It actually is, is running in your data center. It has a very strong IP, API designed for operations. And critically, it integrates to other systems of record. So we are not building digital rebar as a complete data center control plane. Uh, this isn't an OpenStack replacement. This is a uh, infrastructure provisioning uh, and integration tool. So when you have uh, Chef Puppet Ansible, Terraform, you have a CMDB that tracks all your assets. You have a, a logging system. You have a auth, you know, Z, AD system. All, all those things continue to work. We're not displacing those. We are just enabling them in a more positive way. Um, and then on top of that, we do have an optional task runner that runs in the provisioned operating systems or on the switches that get set up and managed. Um, and, in, and that's also Golang based, so it can run in Windows, it can run in Linux, it can run on Mac, it can run on ARM, it can run on Intel. It's, it's, it's very, very flexible. And its job is to pull down work queues. So while some of the workflow is done from the service by presenting files at the correct time and managing state, uh, a significant amount of the work is actually done pre and post uh, by using the agent, either in our discovery image or in the final provisioned image. Uh, and we can do actually quite a bit of work. Uh, simple ones like installing SSH, SSH keys are required, but we can also use that agent to install Kubernetes. Uh, and so the, this is important because when we look at digital rebar, we really thought, rethought the problem. So a lot, of, a lot of people are used to configuration management tools that assume you have a machine and then you take action. You get access to a machine and then you take action. Or you install an agent and then you take action. We build on the assumption that you have nothing, that you get a DHCP packet, and then you send back, uh, based on the protocols, everything you need to bootstrap and run that system. No predetermination, no special wiring, no special configuration, bare metal, out of the box, nothing up. Um, and that really puts us in this unique position where we're creating the infrastructure from scratch, right? We're dealing with the networking, compute, storage, firmware, uh, configurations, operating systems, and then platforms. And, and which is really, for us, platforms are something as simple as Ansible Chef or Puppet, but could go higher into Kubernetes, OpenStack, or other, other platforms. And, and our customers do a variety of things and use the systems in a variety of ways. 
And Digital Rebar does not do all of these things uh, as part of the open source project. It does uh, some of them very, very well. Uh, networking capabilities, compute uh, storage. Um, it does operating system provisioning and it does some platforming work. But there's, there's gaps uh, in that these things are very, the firmware and storage especially are very proprietary. They have a lot of um, interactions with vendored APIs and protocols. And so what's important to understand is if we just did those things in isolation, we would really just have a, a, a better Jenga tower. Uh, and we don't. Part of what Digital Rebar does provide is a unified REST API. So even though these are discrete components as part of our composable workflow strategy, they're actually unified into a single control plane where you can build workflows that cross all of this. And then um, that allows you to then take these pieces and extend it. Uh, so you can build plugins and API extensions that then talk to the complete picture, which is exactly what RackN has been doing. So we've been building things on top of, uh, not replacing Digital Rebar. We use Digital Rebar from the open, but then we extend it to, com to complete the picture, right? And adding a UX, adding federated multi-site controls, things like that, that, that take advantage of what we, the control that we have with Digital Rebar. And so when we look at how the system's been built, what we're working to do here is fix the root causes of problems. Uh, we work very hard to enable reuse. Uh, I don't have time to go into it in this video, but uh, our whole content system is designed so that you can collaborate and reuse uh, stages, components, content tasks from other systems and intermix them. Uh, it's, it's designed to actually have interlocking parts with a high degree of views. We assume these things are heterogeneous. So when you write uh, automation for digital rebar, you're writing it in a generic way and you're not worried about how the systems were set up. You ask for information and then you, you receive the information that's appropriate for you. Um, that in itself is an hour discussion. Uh, it is a very important part of what we've built because we don't want automation that you build to inst install Kubernetes to assume a certain type of cloud or a certain type of hardware or NIC or storage or anything like that. And all of that's pulled together with our integrated workflow, uh, which is very simple to learn uh, and we have found very powerful in, in how it's applied for coordinating tasks across systems, on systems, and uh, to external systems, and, and bouncing back and forth between systems of record and systems that you're provisioning. And this is really our big insight. Uh, when we look at what digital rebar has to do and what data center provisioning is about, it's not about one action or taking concrete actions. It's actually about working within a flow of operations. Uh, this is very cloud-like thinking, right? It's a continuous cycle, continuous integration, continuous deployment, continuous provisioning operation. Digital Rebar takes on some of those really strongly and it, it touches, even in its open form, uh, several of these other, other actions and components, which are all important uh, to build, this, build around and on top of the infrastructure. And as I mentioned before, Racken has been extending around to fill in these gaps where they talk to uh, vendor uh, capabilities or they are for production data centers. Racken's focus is on helping uh, people get into production data centers and maintain production. So Digital Rebar, when we look at it from that perspective, um, has a couple of things I want to review. It's a tiny self-contained footprint, runs in, uh, you know, megabytes of, of RAM small enough to run in a Pi or a Switch. Uh, it's a single multi-platform Go binary, so you can run it on a Pi, which is ARM, or on a server, which is Intel, or on a Mac. Um, it has a very strong REST API uh, and is event-driven. You can subscribe to web, web sockets and watch everything that happens. It is autonomous, and so there, this is not a service uh, that Racken is selling. It is a piece of software that you run in your data center. You can be completely air-gapped, meaning not connected to anything else, and run the system. Uh, it is designed for that use case. Uh, completely, you know, you f upload files using the API and it's never connected to the internet, and that is one of our primary design requirements. And most importantly, it's fast and simple to learn and manage. Um, I, we can't underscore this enough. Data centers are complex. We work incredibly hard to reduce the complexity of the tooling because we, we don't want to add more layers into that problem. So when you look at Digital Rebar running in an environment, um, the service is running, we have the provisioning protocols that you need to have to actually bootstrap and, and manage machines. The agents then help you 
do complete post-provisioning actions. It greatly simplifies the, the workflow and, and what you can get done. And then there's plugins that extend you into out-of-band management, data center um, uh, inventory systems, IP management, environmental controls, and things like that. So Rackend builds a, a, lots and lots of plugins. Um, and then if you want to think about how the system works in Edge, you know we're finally to Edge, what we have uh, is that one unit then replicated into hundreds or thousands of Edge sites. This is where the independence of the design is really important because what we've been able to do is make each data center uh, autonomous. Each digital rebar with this, this air gap thinking in the design means that everything it needs is, is available in that one system, but the APIs allow us to then create a central management core where you can create local, regional, or global federated controls uh, these are things that Racken are adding into the system that allow you to synchronize and coordinate and centrally manage. So there's a significant amount of challenge and, and value being added by Racken on top of Digital Rebar for this, this management infrastructure. Uh, and those are things like having a content library where you can actually do advanced work uh, with continuous integration, image-based deployment, security, where you can uh, pull use the REST API to do management logging and, and uh, federated portals. Uh, and then you can take advanced plugins that help enterprises by doing you know, configuration management, uh, data center, uh, infra, you know, centralized infrastructure management, IP allocation and management uh, by plugins. Uh, those are not things that Racken has to own. It's things that we integrate uh, Digital Rebar to. So fundamentally, what we're doing with Digital Rebar is building the foundations for edge data centers. Uh, and this is not something Racken is trying to do ourselves. We are looking for partners. We are part of an ecosystem, and, and that's our plan. Uh, whether your service provider, software vendor is building things and platforms on top uh, where we see a lot of activity, that's, that's where we are looking for collaboration, right? Being able to take Kubernetes um, and, and really extend it onto bare metal and make it really work in, in very uh, minimal edge environments and globally scale it. And for that reason, Digital Rebar is innovation for infrastructure. And we hope uh, you've enjoyed our presentation. Thank you.